What's up, guys? My name is Marcus Huskins, and thank you for joining me. If you enjoy what I do, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Also, make sure you hit that notification bell so you can be made aware as new content becomes available. In today's video, Studio One version 5 has just recently launched at the time that I'm doing this video. I've got a lot of content that I plan to be trickling out over the coming weeks, but one of the things that I saw on the feature list that I got really excited about is the ability to have key switch articulation presets. So let's dive right in. I have a MIDI part over here, just a basic chord progression. And then through the power of some note effects and a little bit of waves H delay, we can get a really, really cool part just off of a really basic progression. All right, that being said, in this instrument, I'm choosing to trigger just a basic orchestral harp that ships in the factory library with contacts. Now, within this instrument, we have these different articulations. Now, if you don't have any articulations that are programmed, whatever articulation you have selected, That is what is going to play. But in some cases, you might want to change your different articulations. Now for this, it has always been a little bit of a tedious process with Studio One, because essentially what it meant was that you had to find the key switch and then you had to come in here and actually draw it out. And then in a lot of cases, you'd have to pull it a little bit behind so that the key switch change happens slightly before the actual key switch. So in Studio One version five, we have a really nice new implementation of how we work with virtual instruments instruments and scrolling through different articulations. So before we go over this though, I just want to point out that if you're using instruments that are native to personas, so for example, if I pull in this instance of a Presence XT patch, which is something that I've actually created myself, it's one of my own instruments, this has two different key switches for two different articulations. We've got a muted and we've got a sustain. So if you're working with this type of file, all of the actual key switches, if I was to just option or alt drag this MIDI down, notice that within the key switches here, we already have the key switches available. We don't have, we don't need to actually program these. If I hold down command, I've got the arrow tool. So my secondary command function control on a PC is the um, pencil tool over here. I have the option to now choose different key switch articulations. The really cool thing about the way that they've done this is, well, actually a couple things. First of all, the key switch information is filtered out separately from the note data. Now, what this means is that if I wanted to do anything, for example, transposing this at the track level or transposing this on the event level in terms of clicking the instrument part or just transposing things manually and basically doing a command A to select everything, as I'm moving this, the key switches aren't changing at all. And also if I happen to load something like an arpeggiator and let's say we had like three octaves or something, if I was to render this instrument part, really anything, this could be at minus two, this one could be at five, it doesn't matter. Anything that's happening to the instrument part, the key switches are filtered out of that. So if I was to render this track, Notice that we have all of this information here, but the key switches will remain constant and they will change properly. And anything that's been transposed or any note data that you've rendered, that'll remain intact. So that's a really, really useful thing. Let's just hide and disable this track for now. Back to this over here though, the minute you're working with a third party instrument that doesn't have native key switches that display in Studio One, if you open this up in the editor and you make sure that you have this little tab open over here, we have the key switches tab, and then we have this wrench icon over here. Now, the minute you click this wrench icon, you can start editing the pitches and the key switch names. Let's open this up really quickly. We can see that this particular instrument starts at C minus one, C sharp minus one, D minus one, D sharp minus one, and we have these different names that are associated with each one of these articulations. So the way that this works is really, really simple. You click the edit key switches tab over here, and I'm gonna enter, this by default is C1. Let's go C minus one, and notice that it automatically says key switch one. If I click this pitch, it automatically says key switch two. So it's cycling through chromatically, which is generally the way most key switches will work. So that's kind of a time saver. We've got six in total. So I'm just going to click this until I have these six key switches. Now I've also created a note document, a really basic text edit document. 
we can just Command C and then Command V to paste these. So I'm going to paste in each one of these names just like this. And the good thing is a lot of libraries, they will tend to use the same naming structure for the different instruments. So if you made some text edit documents and you could just save them, like for example, you know, VSL strings or, or, or VSL or something, there's a good chance that you wouldn't have to uh, redo this work every single time by trying to type these out. All right, so now that this is done, uh, if I click OK, then it's we've simply changed or we've simply loaded uh, that custom key switch mapping for just this song and just this instrument track. But that's not really what we want to do. The ideal thing that we want to do is if we open this up again, the minute we're happy with this, we can click this option. We have the option to store a preset. So I can give this a preset name and once I'm happy with this, I can click OK and that'll install it on my system. Or once we have things that have already been stored, we can open up these different key switches, for example, VSL strings, VSL factory, orchestral harp, and we could load this directly. Now, one thing to point out over here is that if you want this preset to always load with that key switch preset that's attached, we have an option, we can store an instrument plus effects preset. And when you use this method over here, it will store the key switch articulation preset. It will embed that into the actual preset. So just if you kind of see what I'm talking about over here, if we go back to native instruments, I've already done this and you can see I have harp plus key switch info. If I was to drag this over, this is a brand new instance. It's loaded the same exact harp. If I now take this MIDI event over here, you'll notice that the preset that's associated with the key switch is the contact factory orchestral harp. Now I could change this to be something different if I wanted to, but let's just stick with this one for now. We'll click OK. So now the great thing is that we can start putting these key switches in right away. Another really cool thing about the way these key switches work is that in lots of cases, you would have to basically offset this so that any of these key switch changes are happening slightly before this note. This isn't the case with the way the key switches work in Studio One version 5. What they are actually doing is filtering out the information and it gets sent to the virtual instrument before the rest of the note data. So with all the virtual instruments that I've used and tested, this has worked out perfectly fine for me. Uh, that being said, there are certain instruments that use a different, slightly different methods. So I can't say that it's 100% perfect or works for everything in this, in this context where I'm talking about being able to hard quantize your key switch articulations to the exact beginning of the note. But uh, in general, it's been good for me, and I assume that uh, if there are any problems, that this is something that Personas will take care of uh, in future maintenance updates. But like I said, it's been great for me. So now we have the ability to store that so that it can be recalled. And then last but not least, if you've gone through the actual process of storing something, you could, for example, right-click, show in Finder, and then we have our Finder window over here. If you click the Studio One browser that's located on the side over here, and you go to the Cloud tab, if you log into Exchange, you'll notice that we have this new folder in Studio One 5 that says Key Switches. Now you can also see that lots of people have already been working and uploading different key switches for different instruments. I imagine that uh, we're going to see this really start to fill out and mature as the user community starts to contribute all of the presets that they're doing on their own on a bit-by-bit -bit basis. And this is actually super simple. Once you have the preset that is in the uh, Explorer window or Finder window, it's uh, pretty much as simple as coming over to your Exchange tab and then clicking this Upload File. And then all you have to do is just simply drag this over here and then this will get uploaded to Exchange and then it will be available for all the different users in the key switch folder over here. So that is working with key switches in Studio One version 5. We've got a really cool way that we can store presets. We've got a great way that we can share them with the community. And if you want to embed them into your presets, you simply use the instrument plus effects preset option. And then any key switches that were created and are being used for those instruments will be embedded into the instrument plus effects preset. So you only have to do things once. And then moving forward for any third party virtual instruments, you can just load them up and that key switch articulation editor will already be there 
in place. Anyways, that's all the time I have available for today. I hope that you enjoyed this content. If you did, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Any questions or comments, leave them down below. I'll do my absolute best to get back to you. And as always, we will catch you in the next video. Cheers.